All right, welcome to part four of my series examining Russ Miller's Noah's Ark, The Flood, and Dinosaurs, or whatever the fuck the thing was called. I was going to wait until I got back to Anchorage to finish this, but I was looking at the, the clips that I'd taken from the original video, uh, from his video, and I really only had a few clips left, so this is actually going to be really short. And unfortunately, I should have done it when I did part three. I should have just finished it up with part three. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, but I will do that now. So I'm in Kodiak, and let's let Russ start his bullshit. Also, the Bible says that there were giants in the earth in those days, those pre-flood days. Talking about the Nephilim, in fact, Og was the king of Bashan. He was Goliath's king. His bed was made of iron, and using my cubit, it was 16 feet long and 7 feet wide. Well, then, I mean, if the claim's made in the Bible, it must be true, because the Bible says that everything written in the Bible is true. Um, so, therefore, a claim made in the Bible must be true, because it says in the Bible that, well, fuck. This is from a Wisconsin newspaper in 1904. A race of giants lived here. Mounds were found containing hundreds of skeletons. One skull was three times the size of the ordinary human. Other bones were correspondingly as big. Here's a free hint for you, Russ. Uh, I've probably given this one before. Um, if you're going to borrow material from Kent Hovind, you might want to check his facts because, um, well, I guess you don't really care about the facts. We've already established that in the last three parts, if not the last 20-part video I made to you. Uh, first of all, um, this, is, this is what's hilarious, is that you're reporting this, or Hovind reported this, from Wisconsin. And, in fact, at the bottom of the page, as is typical Hovind style, he has the name or address or something of a person that, you know, you can call yourself to verify that he's telling the truth. Um, in this case, that the mounds are underwater in front of Ali's resort or something like that, right? That's, that's what it says in the bottom, um, with an area code that's in Wisconsin. So therefore, right, Wisconsin, that's where this, this happened, except for the fact <clears throat> that the mound being described with the giant skeletons in it uh, was reported from Ohio, not Wisconsin. Isn't that interesting? Um, why? I mean, I, I guess it was a, I don't know, a hell of a landslide that put a, a mound from Ohio in Wisconsin. Just you know, kind of kind of a little weird, don't you think? Um, and the, but the quote that you actually use about the giant skeletons is actually from a is from a book, uh, the edition that's online. You can freely get it on Google Books, by the way, uh, by Henry Howe on the uh, history of Ohio. Um, which is where that citation is mostly from, although slightly altered. Um, again, you can get it on Google Books. I will put a link down below. Uh, you can download the PDF and read it yourself. Uh, How is reporting of a story from a newspaper from 100 years before he wrote it in 1907, or he wrote it prior to 1907, sorry, um, prior to him writing this 100 years earlier about people reporting in Ohio finding mounds with giant skeletons in it. Um, now, I'm going to read you exactly what Howe wrote, um, which is similar to what M Miller is reporting here. Here's what Howe writes. There were mounds situated in the eastern part of the village of Cano and an extensive burying ground near the Presbyterian Church, which appeared to have had no connection with the burying places of the Indians. Among the human bones found in the mounds were some belonging to men of gigantic structure. Some of the skulls were of sufficient capacity to admit the head of an ordinary man and jawbones that might have been fitted over the face with equal facility. The other bones were proportionately large. Um, okay, now this, this, this is funny because of the fact that, first of all, he says that the, 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 you could put a man's head inside the skull that was found, um, which... You know, yeah, that's a big skull, but it's hardly three times the size of an ordinary person. That's the part that Kent changed from from Howe's account. Um, the the other bones were proportionally large. That's that's in there and everything like that. But what's funny is is that he then in that same section, according to the original paper or the old paper that Howe is citing from, um, that the bones were never preserved because of the fact that they were. Um, uh, blackened by age and turned to dust upon exposure to the air. Um, in other words, like a whole lot of these old claims, no evidence exists for it, right? Mankind's gene pool 
has the data to produce huge humans. Look at some of the NBA players. So why aren't giant human bones on dis prominent displays at museums around the world? All right, Russ, I'm going to answer your question. Uh, why aren't the museums filled with the skeletons of giant humans? Uh, well, the answer is pretty simple, and it's actually the same answer that one would give if the question were asked, why isn't your ministry filled with honest, educated, well-researched, young Earth creation scientists? Um, the answer is simple, because there fucking aren't any. Well, because that goes against the fairy tale of Darwinian evolution, which says things are evolving bigger and better. Despite all the science, it says just the opposite. Things are getting worse and worse. I think the only thing that science can confidently claim is getting bigger and better over time is the sheer magnitude of bullshit that comes out of your mouth, Russ. Have you ever heard the term prehistoric animal? Did you know that there's really no such word as prehistoric? The correct word is pre-flood animal. Giant critters are found throughout the various strata layers, and they're an embarrassment to evolutionists. So they call them prehistoric and shovel them off to the side like they don't count. But they do count. All right, uh, I have to concede this point to Russ. He, he, does, he, he makes a, a valid um, observation here. It's true. Uh, once in a great while, we do stumble across, you know, the bones, fossils, and such of extinct organisms, uh, some of which are larger than their modern-day counterparts, if such exists even. And, um, you know, we just don't study them. We just shuffle them off to the side. We try to hide them. That's, that's, that's why if you go to any museum, you won't see any, any like, you know, dinosaur bones, mammoth bones, um, you know, any, any of those extinct animals, the extinct megafauna of the, of the past, you'll never see one, any of those in any book, any museum, anywhere, because it's our dirty little secret. We don't want the public to know that there's, you know, dinosaurs and mastodons and all of that kind of stuff, you know? It's, it's, our, it's our little secret. Here's an 1860 Webster's Dictionary. There's no word prehistoric in there. You really like your dictionary, don't you, douchebag? Um, what what the fuck are you trying to prove here? What, I don't even get what you're trying, what point you're trying to make. I don't, and I think you probably know that it's a meaningless point, but again, you're appealing to an absolutely fundamentally ignorant audience, aren't you? Um, first of all, it's wrong. Uh, 1860 dictionary doesn't have the word prehistoric in it. Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it was a shitty dictionary. Uh, because according to etymology.com, the word prehistoric is traced in English. It's older in French. Uh, but it's traced in English to 1851, uh, so that if it's not in your dictionary nine years later, maybe your dictionary's fucked. I don't know. Um, but you know what? The point is, it's pointless anyhow uh, because of the fact that, you know what? I bet there's a shit ton of words of things that exist that aren't in that dictionary. Uh, I mean, are you going to concede then that if it's not in your 1860 dictionary that those things don't exist? Are you there, rustical? Huh? I mean, think about it, right? Space shuttle. I bet space shuttle is not in that dictionary. Must not exist, right? Scientists at John Hopkins have found a growth gene in mice that will cause mice to grow three times their normal size when it's activated. How would you like to have those mice around your house? So tell me, Russ, are you uh, functionally illiterate, uh, fundamentally lazy, or, you know, just at lying again, or maybe copying from a source you don't quite understand, whatever the case may be. The paper you're talking about by McFerrin et al. from Nature 1997, again, link down below, uh, is about a myostatin inhibition gene in mice that causes their muscle mass to nearly double, not mice three times normal size. Again, it, that's nowhere in the paper. That's not there. You're completely, you're just talking shit. Bats have been found fossilized that were the size of sheep with 15-foot wingspans. You couldn't go outside after dark with bats like that flying around, could you? <laughs> have you seen Uncle Bob? No, he went out after dark the other night. We said, don't go out there, Uncle Bob. He didn't listen to us. We think the bats got him. Bats the size of sheep with 15-foot wingspans, Russ? Um, I'd love to see a source for that because, uh, well, actually, I know you can't provide one because there's no such thing. We're taught that fossils take millions of years to develop. Let me ask you a question. Who's ever seen a fossil form over millions of years? Nobody. That's a religious belief. Now, if I can show you just one example of something fossilizing in less than a million years, then I have scientifically refuted that teaching, correct?
This is my favorite fossil to show people. This cowboy boot was made in 1950, according to the manufacturer. It was found fossilized just 30 years later. Is 30 years the same thing as millions of years? No, we've just refuted that false teaching. The sad but interesting thing is a poor cowboy's fossilized foot and ankle, it's inside of the boot. So why are textbooks still teaching that these things take millions of years to form? First thing there, Russ, nobody claims that fossils have to take millions of years to form. Um, you're just making that shit up. The fossils can form much, much quicker than that. Uh, fossils can form in a few years under the right circumstances. Uh, that's completely a stupid statement. And the length of time it takes for something to fossilize does not in any way a problem for the theory of evolution. You're just saying that shit again to your absolutely scientifically illiterate audience. Um, but I had to laugh when you brought up the limestone cowboy. Um, you say it's one of your favorites? Well, it's one of mine, too. Um, sometime, by the way, guys, I will be, I want to do an extensive video on the limestone cowboy where I'm actually going to try to duplicate it. Um, there, there, there's a purpose behind that. Uh, one of the things about that, that that slays me is if you look at the, I'll put a link down below to Ian Juby's website where he's got some high quality, high resolution photos of it. So you can see some, some good detail on the bones themselves and on the matrix around the bones and, and figure out what they are. Um, it, the point of it is, is that if you ever see a human skeleton, uh, look look at the tibia and fibula of a, of a human leg bone. Um, look how small they are. Look how small in diameter. Even the tibia, the larger of the two, um, is still a few centimeters in diameter. Um, those bones are extremely heavy and thick. Uh, if you look at the portion of the largest one that, that can be seen, um, it's still not enough to positively identify, but it looks a whole lot more like the humerus of an artiodactyl than it does any human or other leg bone, okay? Um, the humerus, the upper arm bone, and it's about the right, right size and shape of a pig. Um, again, I'm going to get some, I'm going to I'm going to attempt to duplicate this and look at look at some different artiodactyl bones in some detail and try to figure out what it really is and make a video about it because I think that'd be fun. Um, either way, both of the bones in there are the same bone, so there are probably two pig humeri um, stuffed into a boot with plaster of Paris poured around them. That's probably what they are. Um, again, I don't know if it's an act, if somebody was tricking Carl Baugh, it's where the where the boot was kept at Carl Baugh's museum or if it was a created fraud of his, or whatever the case. I don't know what its actual origin is, but it's certainly not a human leg inside of a boot. Um, one, of the re one of the people looking into this claim, I think it might be Glenn Kuban. I'm, I could be wrong on that, and I don't really have, I, I'm not going to go look it up. Um, but somebody looking into this find uh, made the statement to Ba that either, one, it's a fraud, and it's, again, a couple of pig bones stuffed in, in plaster of Paris stuck in a boot, um, meaning it's completely fake. Or, under the weird, unlikely chance that for some reason this is um, an amazing example of quick fossilization and it actually is a human leg in that boot, um, if that's the case, then it shouldn't be sitting in a museum, okay? It should be have been investigated. That means that somebody... It, 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 it was a crime scene. It's a it's a death scene. You can't just walk out and find a human bone, pick it up, and take it home. You're not supposed to do that. Um, so when this is brought up, uh, apparently, uh, if I recall correctly how the story goes, uh, the boot was taken out of Carl Ball's museum and is now unknown whereabouts. So it's kind of funny when when he was confronted with the idea that it's you know if it's legitimate, then you need to be talking to the police about it, or if it's not, then it's you're admitting it's a fraud, um, it disappeared, says it was returned to its anonymous owner, or whatever it is. Um, that that's that's apparently was the story behind it. Anyway, again, I'm going to make a, uh, hopefully, um, when I get back to, back home, I will make an, a more detailed video and try to duplicate the limestone cowboy find, and, and talk a little bit more about its history and such. It's pretty funny, though, that um, Russ is either pretending to believe that it's real or believes it's real. Either way, he's a fucking douchebag. And when the door of that ark shut, it was too late for anybody else to get on board. Do you know anyone could have gone up that narrow plank that went through that one door into the ark? Anyone could have got on board that ark and been safe from the flood in the hands of God. But only Noah and his family 
put their faith in God. The others did not and were literally dead in the water when the flood burst forth upon the earth. Well, it's nice to know that even your Bible isn't safe from your uh, douchebaggery and lies, now is it? Um, I'm curious, where do you get that anywhere in the Bible that anybody could have gotten on the ark? Uh, where is that said? Where's where's that at? Because um, it's not it's not in the passages in the New Testament that mention Noah. Um, it does mention that the people were eating and drinking and being merry and such, um, and it's not mentioned in in the chapters in Genesis about Noah's flood. Nowhere does it say that anybody was welcome. In fact, it states specifically that God decided to destroy all flesh except for Noah and his family. So was was, was Noah violating? Is this something you know? Like maybe. You have some inside information, um, I, you know, or are you just talking bullshit again? Because again, you're just like, oh, I don't know, science, history, or anything else that you've lied about to your pig fuck ignorant audience. Uh, they probably haven't even read the Bible either. Um, I'm going to call this good now. I guess I've, I've that that's the last clip that I have from this. Um,